Hello, my name is Bill Miller, and I'll tell, be telling you about my best cup of coffee today. And I just so happen to have a couple of my favorite coffee-related memes. Drink coffee, do stupid things faster with more energy, which uh, maybe I'll be doing in my presentation. And how I feel after my morning coffee, truly like a unicorn. Now, I chose uh, two types of Ethiopian beans to work with this semester primarily. I've made a number of other cups of coffee as well uh, and did some other roasts too, but this is really what I uh, concentrated on. And mostly, as you've seen, if you've uh, done all the activities for this, as you've seen that I've worked with Ethiopia Sadama Karamo a lot. And I purchased that in a 20-pound bag so I had a lot of it, so fair enough. Um, and uh, learned a lot about roasting it using the popcorn popper the, uh, this semester. Uh, but now these uh, flavor profiles I downloaded from the Sweet Maria's where I got both of these types of coffee. And you can see the green is body uh, for the, uh, I'm going to call it the ESK, the Ethiopia Sadama Karamo. Uh, it's got pretty high scores on uh, sugars, florals, and body, fruits, and citrus as well. Um, and uh, I think it's going to make, and those are the kinds of things it notes right here. Now, I'm not perfect at tasting all of those, but um, I want to, and what I really like about this is it says it's truly a showstopper when roasted light, and I was interested in exploring some light roasts. When I chose a roast, it was a light roast because that's the kind of coffee, that's what the uh, tasting notes said. And uh, I think I found out that, yes, it is true that, that they do, uh, these beans do. Plus, I like a light roast. Uh, the coffee really smells great One, just immediately as soon as you roast it and grind it. Uh, I guess I should have smelled it before I ground it too, but uh, after I ground it, it sm smelled delicious. When I roasted it, I started with exactly 85.0 grams of green coffee beans. And uh, that's the maximum size for the Nesco popcorn popper. I ended with 74.0 grams. I lost 11.0 grams of gases, uh, two gases in chaff, and uh, which uh, is, is a lighter roast. That's uh, not too much. We've, uh, when I roast darker, I lose more. Oh, and my uh, roasting time was from turning it on to finish five minutes. I forgot to note that, uh, write it down in my presentation, but that's true. My brewing process, I chose to uh, use my blade grinder because that's what I have. Uh, I chose and ground the beans for 15 seconds, which is relatively long. You can see my beans are relatively fine here, uh, finely ground that is, and that's based on some of the hints for the Clever Dripper that you can use a pretty finely ground bean or grind. And uh, I will use a um, not too long extracting time, so I don't want to over extract, I don't want to under extract. Um, this is sort of where I got to in my process. Then I choose a brew ratio of 15 to one. This keeps the amount of water low and can lead to more concentrated coffee. And uh, I also chose a, uh, so, a, right, 25 grams of beans, 375 grams of water approximately, although you'll see that I ended up with a little less than that. And uh, that keeps my brew ratio at about 15. I ended up with about 14.5. And I used a white paper filter. 375 grams of water, by the way, is pretty close to the top of the Clever Dripper. I think you can go 400 max. Uh, and um, I used a white paper filter. Uh, from Giant Grocery Store, the Nature's Promise brand. Now, um, I, I did use a kettle to warm up my water. When I got it out of the kettle, it was actually at 96 degrees for a very short time. Then it went to 95. I waited until it got down to 94 degrees before I added it to my Clever Dripper. I did exactly a three-minute extraction as far as three minutes with the Clever Dripper on the coffee cup. It took uh, some more time for it to drain. And I did stir it um, several times. And this is a video of me stirring it. And I probably stirred it about half the time, uh, though that did have a noticeable effect on 
uh, the time it took to drain, which we will see. I'll talk about that in a minute. Oop, there's my. video again. Here's all my data from my brew. Um, I just It's all the typical data that we take with a couple exceptions. And I want to point out, so my extraction time was three minutes. And uh, then I uh, removed the CD. CD is my abbreviation for Clever Dripper from the coffee cup. Um, sorry. I After three minutes, I put it on top of the coffee cup. After five minutes, it still wasn't finished draining. So I took it off. I didn't want to over extract. When I did that, um, so there was still some brew left in the Clever Dripper, and I weighed it, took its mass, that is. It weighed 358. And then when I let it drain into a separate container, put it back on, and it was down to 339.7. So I did add the difference here uh, to the mass of brew to get my total mass of brew because that's important when doing your um, your percent TDS and, and converting it back into your percent extraction. But other than that, I think these are all the basic uh, parameters for uh, how I did my brew, all the data. And we've been doing that, co collecting that data all semester. And then I analyzed that, and here are the results. Here's my total mass of brew, again, including that portion that didn't make it into the coffee that I actually drank, true. Uh, my refractive index was 1.3357. Um, and I actually took a picture of that. Uh, I meant to include that. And I found out that by the time I got the picture, my coffee had cooled down and uh, that had uh, elevated my refractive index. So temperature does have an effect on refractive index. Um, so make sure you let it cool down for at least five minutes um, before you put it on your handheld refractometer. Actually, that's one of the things I learned. Um, because straight out of the bin, it was 1.3351, and that was while it was still hot. And small differences lead to big changes in the percent TDS coffee. Um, so I uh, went through, did my calculation found my percent uh, total dissolved solids coffee, 1.7%. It was actually 1.70, but I think we, two sig figs, two um, digits is good for this. That gave me, when I did the calculation, 1.7% times my mass of brew, gave me 4.9 grams of coffee solids in my brew. And as I'm showing down here, the coffee solids in my brew must be equal to the coffee solids removed from the dry grounds. One of the key notions uh, that we talk about this whole semester, and that's mass balance. You take mass from one place, it must show up in another place. That's how that applies here. My mass and my dry grounds, 24.3 grams, and when you divide these two numbers, I get pretty close to an even 20% extraction, which is nice and in that um, range of 18 to 22% that we hope to get. So, so far, it seems like this could be good tasting coffee. And I'm delighted to say it was. Uh, it, it was fantastic. Um, as a light roast, tastes very fruit acidic, which is something that I, I am going for with that lighter roast. It lingers on the tongue for about 30 plus seconds. I could really taste it. And um, beyond that, personally, I have a hard time tasting the different notes that they say. Um, it was a distinctive coffee, I can say that. And that's really what I can go for. Um, and for me, I learned a lot about coffee by putting this class together. Uh, my most unexpected thing was about the health effects of coffee, both positive and, positive and negative. Um, <laughs> some people can drink a lot of coffee. Uh, one of the things I found out is that I need to pace myself each day, and that uh, that's why throughout the course you've seen me not drink it, just taste it, and... Um, spit it out um, because coffee late in the day, like at the time I'm recording this, would um, keep me up at night and I need my, my, I need my beauty sleep, let's say. Uh, I also learned that it was, as I just mentioned, it was important to wait until the coffee is cooled before uh, measuring the refractive index. I learned a lot of other stuff too, but those are two key points for me. Um, oh, I learned so many things uh, through this semester. 
putting this class together. Uh, and learn more about colloids, more about mass balances, and how mass balances really do work quite well for these cups of coffee. Uh, I made a really delicious cup of coffee with the um, Ethiopian, uh, Sadama Karamo, and um, I was surprised to find out while putting this class together that they say that it doesn't matter how you add the water, um, and I, I don't understand it. I'd like to study that more, but uh, I did learn about that, and it looks like I'm missing a closed parenthesis there because unlike some other brew methods where it's very important. And that is my presentation. Thank you very much.